I think in many ways the group that has been gathered here today is already an indication of what the Paris Agreement hoped to achieve basically providing a platform for a variety of people to come to the table and contribute to a very wicked problem. Now, coming out of COP21, we saw uh, a lot of emphasis on climate change adaptation and loss and damage being articulated quite you know, robustly uh, in the Paris Agreement. So I think that is an indicator um, where countries should be going, and certainly South Africa, is that one, we really need to put a lot of implementation force behind the National Disaster Management Act, but also we need to support um, municipalities and cities to operationalize the disaster management centers. And in the past, we had pathways and platforms that had much less tangibility than what the Paris Agreement actually stands for. Perhaps differently than during the past COPs, COP21 clearly bears the signature of South Africa, but also of the African continent as a whole. So we have overcome climate apartheid uh, of the past, we are now all equal before the law. Well, you mentioned the El Salvador Accord on Mobilizing Finance. Could you give us just very briefly a sense of what that gives us? So what I was saying that, you remember by Deborah mentioned greatly the idea that you know, we've strongly now placed adaptation on the agenda, including loss and damage. As a continent and also as a sub-region, it means if we're going to be addressing climate change effectively, we need to be looking more inward before raising resources. Adaptation is very context-specific, and I think that's already where South African municipalities, for example, Durban has led the Durban Adaptation Charter, really driving forward this idea of adaptation and trying to look at what it means in the local context, giving it a face in an African scenario. We think communities and ecosystems are critical parts of Africa's adaptation in the urban context. And I think giving life to that, demonstrating what that actually looks like in practice is really where our strength lies. Especially with young people in Africa, there is a strong perception of COP21 and capacity building of young people to inform them what this agreement will mean for them and for the future of our children. I think that is one of the greatest challenges that we, we're facing, but that's something that we can start working on right now.